Friends. What's happening, everybody? It's your favorite half Persian comedian, the one, the only, the most famous. It's me, Kayvon. If you never see me, that's okay. A lot of new fans have signed up in the last month because we just had a sold out show in Vancouver and five shows in Atlanta, Georgia. Check! <laughs> I want to thank all of you for coming to the show. And uh, I have a question for you. I want you to answer in the comments. What was your favorite Thanksgiving memory this year? Now, I know Canada, you celebrated Thanksgiving a little early. What was your favorite Thanksgiving memory? It could have been a food item. Maybe you like your aunt's turkey or your uncle's smashed yams, candied yams. I don't know what it was. Go ahead and put it in the comments your favorite Thanksgiving memory, or as I like to call it, Thanksgiving. Because, well, we need to be more thankful, don't we? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, as I said before, my favorite memory, by the way, was probably my little puppy met my cousins, and uh, you know the dog Reno? You seen Reno? He's a boxer. And he likes, if you hide under a blanket, he will attack you. And so my cousin was running around wearing the blanket, and usually he just bites and digs, but, um, well, it was inappropriate. But when Reno attacked, uh, he grabbed the kid's shoulders and, well, uh, in my opinion, the kid looked like he was dressed like the Taliban. And so Reno uh, embarrassed him in a whole new way. We'll just leave it at that. We don't, uh, the video was posted and uh, it lasted 24 hours. If you missed it, well, we were, uh, we were a little shocked how Reno decided to handle the Taliban. But his heart was in the right place, I'll tell you that. Booyah! Okay, so uh, as you're thinking and posting, uh, what was your favorite Thanksgiving memory? You might have noticed I didn't post a whole lot on Instagram last week. Why did I not post on Instagram? Because 10 haters all uh, reported my account, and I know who they are. They told me they were going to do it. They said, we're going to report your account as inappropriate because comedians, we make jokes, we make statements, we're very free thinking and free speaking. Ten losers, uh, mostly from UCLA, pro-regime, uh, anti-human rights, they attacked me for something I said uh, two weeks ago and Instagram shut me down for ten days. So that's why you didn't hear from me. It was like a long ten days. If you look like, I think it was like eight days maybe, but I couldn't post. Every time I went to post it says, uh, we are reviewing your account, we will turn you back on on 11-28 as long as everything is kosher. So with that said, that came and went, uh, which is fine. So I am most thankful for my Instagram being turned back on. If you're not a fan on Instagram, some of you are watching on Facebook right now, just go on at KVON Comedy, and we show them. So you dummies, although I was turned off for a week, you won the small battle, I won the war, we still sold out Atlanta, Vancouver, and you didn't stop me, and we got more shows coming. Woo -hoo -hoo. Yeah, speaking of which, before I go to your comments, I'd like to tell you we've just added Edmonton, Toronto, Salt Lake City, and Albany, or Albany. Albany or Albany? If you can help me pronounce that in the comments, please let me know. Do you prefer Albany or Albany, New York? I believe it's Albany, but I'll let my New Yorkers, I will defer to those of you who are from that part of the world. As you know, I'm a West Coast guy. California love. But I was raised in Reno, Nevada. Next, we did a show at the Persian Center. Uh, that was the, the best part about those pro-regime haters from UCLA. They said, I will never perform ever again. And boy, were they wrong. We did a show at the Persian Center on Sunday in Norcross, Georgia. Huge turnout. Great people. Can I tell you what? Some of the best, some of the greatest people you've ever seen. Okay? Believe me, the kind of people that didn't want to go to a comedy show, they did not want to go to the punchline, but they wanted a private event at the Canoon Center. Believe me, we had a great time. Okay, one of the best times. Never seen a better time than that. You can count on it. All right, and uh, what else did we do this week? Well, that was it. After doing all those shows, a lot of comedians go home, smoke weed, eat some Fruit Loops, and wait for the next show, but I was actively working on booking theaters, shows, and events all over the world just so I can touch all 
four corners of the globe, if you will. I'm getting requests to go to Kuwait. That has not happened yet. I keep messaging those guys. Uh, Australia, a couple requests. But I'll tell you what, mate, I do want to go all the way down under only for 10 people to be there in the audience. So we're going to have to get that up to about 100 people. <laughs> That's a horrible accent. we got to get it up to about um, 200 people per show. And I want to do five shows down under. All right. So there you go. I'm going to read the comment soon. Uh, some people are saying, Kayvon, why don't you say your jokes in Farsi? I addressed that in my new one-hour comedy special. I can't wait. For you guys to see my new one hour comedy special. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be something. Because my first one hour special was called Tanks God. And it was one hour of all kind of Persian themed jokes. There were some jokes about other stuff. But the, the, the thread that held the whole thing together. <laughs> was dad is Persian. The next one hour special is called Wrist Out. You can find both on www.kvon.com. Dot TV. Can you believe it? I got my own name, Kvon.tv. That's a website. That was called Wrist Out. Because that was an hour I was getting a little criticism from some people saying, is that all you can do? All you can do are Persian jokes? Hmm. Yeah, you're very famous and you're very half Persian, but that's all you can do. So I switched the game up on them. You will not hear the word Persian. One time you will not hear a single Persian joke in the special called Wrists out. It's more about me growing up in Reno, funny things about dating, airports, uh, all these topical political issues of the day, but it's not a political special. It just talks about the social, basically the, the social uh, issues that, are, that were poignant at the time. It was filmed two years ago. The new one, my friends, what do you think the new one? I'm going to ask you guys what you think the new one is before I tell you. Because you guys are my most loyal of fans and friends and family watching. And I want to see if you can guess. What is he going to do for the third? <laughs> Funny answers are accepted. You can post anything you want. Uh, as you're thinking of what I'm going to do for the <laughs> third special. Uh, I'll tell you that in between those two specials, I wrote a funny book about Persians. It's called Von Sugo Persian. And it's kind of a, a wrap-up of everything I've learned in the last decade. All right. So as you're thinking of answers... Uh, uh, uh. I will read some people said Kayvon it is Albany which is cool that's kind of what I thought it was Albany uh, there's a great comment from Zahida she said Kayvon those people tried to shut down your Instagram and your stand up comedy because they cannot control themselves so they're very busy trying to control others and I believe that if they don't have a good solid argument or what really is mad or they don't want to debate they just go through back channels to shut down your Facebook, which my Facebook has been shadow banned. I used to get almost a million views per video. Now they get about 200 views on Facebook. So we, Facebook friends, asking you to come over to YouTube, Instagram, Facebook owns Instagram, and now WhatsApp. So who knows what's going to happen now that they own WhatsApp. Okay. We're going to read the comments now. Kayvon, itch bin da. Each bean da. Is that one, two, three in uh, another language? Each bean da. Or did I just cuss everybody out in uh, German? I don't know. We will find out. I'm getting a, a, a flag that says love from Brazil right now. Okay, the suspense is killing me. I will tell you what my new one hour special is about for those who have not been to my shows. The new one hour special is a blend of some Persian jokes and family stuff mixed with current things that are happening in the world. And it's really, I promise, you can watch Netflix, you can watch uh, Comedy Central. I will put my special up against every single one of those comedians. I will offer it to them to post, but in my experience, they want to see everyone do it on their own and then they just jump on a train that's already moving. That's why Netflix, they give some opportunities to the young up and coming uh, comedians, but they want to get in bed with uh, Dave Chappelle uh, Chris um, Rock Jerry Seinfeld so that's where Netflix they're, they're like we got the big dogs now and then they sprinkle it with like these up and comers okay the big dogs we know who they are everyone below them I will put my one hour special head to head against theirs and I guarantee it will not be like oh this guy uh, is a nobody and that is a Netflix comedian 
if we just watch the clips, people will go, what? I like that guy better. And that's the whole point. Maybe that'll be the special. The name of the special. I like that guy better. But uh, yeah, th that's the one hour I've been working on. So that's why I've been working so hard going around the country. We're adding Minnesota. We're adding El Paso, Texas. We're adding uh, Brea, California. Just got approved. And Oxnard. Because SoCal was saying, how come you don't come visit no more? You don't write. You don't call. The reason I'm going to all corners of the United States, Canada, and the globe is to make sure that these jokes are tested all over the place. We might even add England. I don't... People are asking right now, are you going to add England? I would love to add England. We want to test these jokes so much. You want to forge them in a fire so hot worldwide that when they come out, people go, damn. Did that dude just did that? Did that dude just did that? That's what we want people to say. Did that dude just did that? All right. That's all I have for you guys. Um, I've already told you all the show dates. They're all on my website. The book is on there. The two specials. The jokes in the third special make fun of everything. Just the whole, if you try to think, it makes fun of racism or perceived racism. That's one of the huge uh, themes. It makes fun of um, white people. I make a special point to make fun of Asian people, Indian people, of course, with love behind it, right? I uh, talk about how some people say, well, you can make fun of those people, but you would never make fun of black people, would you? In the special, I say, yes, because they're people too. How would it look if I was comfortable joking about white people, Indian people, Asian people, Saudi Arabian people, and then I left black people out? Wouldn't that be uh, racist? If for some reason those people did not count in your special, you did not want them to be a part, uh-uh. We're doing everybody. I make fun of myself. I make fun of my family. I make fun of your family. I make fun of everything. So maybe the special title will be called This Is Everything. Hmm. I'm still thinking of a, a, a title. It, at the same time, I'm writing a new book as well because as these ideas are coming, not all of them are good for stand-up, but they're very funny stories, so you slide it into the book. And for those of you wondering what we are at for a book count, we had to just order 2,000 more books. They just came to us on Amazon in a big old truck, the poor guy. He just, usually Amazon leaves a package and drives. This guy, he brought out 10 boxes of books back to the truck, 10 boxes of books back to the truck. He's like, hey, uh, you like books, huh? I go, I like this book because I wrote it. We got 40, what, no, 50 boxes. Actually, we got 49 boxes of books because a day later, the guy came back. He's like, this was in the bottom of the truck, dude. And he just threw it in a roll to the porch. You could tell he was sick of visiting me with those books. But we got 49, and the 50th came the next day. He, he lost it. He must have hit the brakes in the books. One box slid under his chair. He didn't see that. So that was funny. But um, we, had, uh, we just ordered 2,000 more because we have sold... 2,500 books. And I'm going to write it for you guys. And I have to write it backwards. I'm going to show you how good I am at writing backwards. Boom. Was that good or what? You can tell I'm not that good at writing backwards. Because uh, the two looks kind of jacked up. But that was backwards. 2,500 books. Blowing away our goal. 2,020 books by the year 2020. So, I would encourage you, if you've never bought one, to please pick one up for Christmas. In fact, uh, message me online. I'll even sign it to a family member. That's a great stocking stuffer. It's a book called Once You Go Persian, A Survival Guide from a Half, which gives you everything you want to know about Persians in fun bite-size uh, portions. A lot of fun. All right, that's all I have, guys. Let's read these comments and get out of here. Kayvon, come to England. I would love to. I was there last year in 2018, had a blast in Manchester and in London. I'm going to ask you guys a trivia question. Why do the British speak British with a British accent and the Americans speak somewhat like me, kind of flat and monotone, but the British will speak a little bit more gentle with a little bit more of a lilt as they're speaking British? There's lots of different British people, of course, they speak, but like chimney sweep, 
If that was your job, you'd be up there doing the chimney sweep. And we just say, chimney sweep. If you can figure out why the British speak like that, put it in the comments. Funny answers are accepted. Shout out to Miss Alarifi, who said hello. Kayvon, how you doing? Someone named Alex says, Kayvon, I love Lubia Polo. Well, I'm glad you do. I have had Lubia Polo. I've never made it. I've had, I've made Zereshk Polo. Very good. Kayvon, what kind of fish has two knees? Hmm, a two knee fish. I don't even, because I've been doing comedy so long, I don't have to have heard the joke before. I can get to the punchline if it makes sense. And that's what I just did there. Kayvon, we don't have Thanksgiving in the UK. Well, maybe that's your problem. Do you have anything to be thankful for? Perhaps you can put that in the comments. What you're thankful for in the UK. Kayvon, you're still hard as a rock. Oh, well, thank you for saying that. Pow! Oh, no, Kayvon, you rock. Never mind. Delete that last 10-second bit. We'll not... We'll edit that out for the final production. Kayvon... I like your second comedy special. All right, fine. Kayvon, say a joke in Farsi. I can't. I cannot speak Farsi. And that is one of the topics of the new one-hour special. Uh, Safi Amin says, Kayvon, don't worry. I am part Persian, and I don't know Farsi either. Kayvon, you are fun. Okay, Kayvon. Oh, that's a good one. Someone said, Kayvon, for your next special, you should say, Turd time is a charm. Wouldn't that be funny? My turd special? That would be funny. How would you spell turd though? T-I-R-D, this is my turd special? Or would you say this is my, let me write it backwards for you guys to show you how good I am already. Would you say this is my, okay. Would you say this is my uh, turd special? Or would you opt with the, Spelling that I did for my my other one, I wrote, I wrote them and said this is how you spell it, my turd special. Ah, <sighs> there's so many decisions to make when you do a production. How many cameras? What are you gonna wear that will look good 15 years from now? A lot of you don't know. I wore comedy. Uh, I wore cargo pants in my comedy special back in 2006 or seven. Cargo pants were pretty cool. Uh, they were on their way out in 2007, but they weren't totally gone in 2008. By, uh, Netflix bought that special and put my performance on Netflix in 2017. Cargo pants are, were not popular anymore in 2017. Yeah, I took a lot of heat for that. Got beat up pretty bad. They said, why are you wearing cargo pants on your Netflix, you... God damn idiot, are you stupid? And that was just the women. Very rough, uh, these fashionistas. So uh, I gotta pick an outfit that in 15 years, like, ah, it's a little outdated, but it looks good, it looks good. I think medium, not skinny jeans and not baggy. Medium jeans, denim, maybe a, a jacket like this. But then I get hot on stage, okay? I could wear, check it out. I could wear this jacket on there, okay? But it's a little bulky and I don't wanna get hot. Would you listen to a special by, I look kinda of like a gangster. This might not be hot in 2030. Okay, what about this one? What about this so for a more scholarly look? We have to think of all this stuff, okay? This is like your professor, maybe your teacher's aide at college, graduate student, okay? Of course I would lose the hat. Or maybe roll the sleeves. Hmm? Hey, doing comedy. Yeah, Mr. Rogers wannabe. Look at that. Cardigan. Yeah, with the wood buttons. So I wear brown shoes. Okay, all right. Or the other option, right over here. Kind of like a more rugged, like urban look. The black jean jacket with buttons, right? If I get my chest a little bigger, I could pop the buttons with my chest. Just go pow, right? Little like Bruce Springsteen, like, born in the USA, I was born in the USA. Uh -huh. All right, so those are your options so far out of my suitcase for my special I'm filming in 
nine months. Obviously, these will not be the only things. I think this is this is what I was leaning towards, to be honest. You know, and we can go call her up too. Little James Dean. He's got that dang Dean look in his eye. Oh. All right, so that's all, folks. You have been part of the decision-making process for what I shall wear in the new one-hour special, what jokes will be told in the one-hour special, and now I'm going to go prepare for my show in Tampa, Florida. If you are in Tampa, you should come to the show tomorrow. I got my friend Kevin Crump coming to the show. I got my friend Andy Senfield coming to the show. I've got about 100 people coming to a state, Florida, that I've never lived in a city Tampa that I have never headlined so I need all your help getting all my Floridians to come laugh in my face all right thank you everybody I'll see you next time enjoy the rest of your week and put what you're thankful for in the comments we will respond to each of them bye bye